Private ownership of property is vital to our freedom and our prosperity and is one of the most fundamental principles embedded in our Constitution. The Founders realized the importance of property rights by enshrining property rights protections throughout the Constitution, including in the Fifth Amendment, which provides that private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. This clause created two conditions to the government taking private property, that the subsequent use of the property is for the public and that the government gives the property owner just compensation. However, the Supreme Court's 5-4 to four decision in Kelo versus City of New London was a step in the opposite direction. This controversial ruling expanded the ability of state and local governments to exercise eminent domain powers to seize property under the guise of economic development when the public use is as incidental as generating tax revenues or creating jobs. The Kelo decision even permits the government to take property from one private individual and give it to another private entity. As the dissenting justices observed, by defining public use so expansively, the result of the Kelo decision is, quote, effectively to delete the words, quote, for public use, end quote, from the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment. The specter of condemnation hangs over property. The government now has license to transfer property from those with few resources to those with more. The founders cannot have intended this perverse result. In the wake of this decision, state and local governments can use eminent domain powers to take the property of any individual for nearly any reason. Cities may now bulldoze private citizens' homes, farms, and small businesses to make way for shopping malls and other developments. For these reasons, it is important that Congress finally pass the Private Property Rights Protection Act. I am pleased that this legislation incorporates many provisions from legislation I helped introduce in the 109th Congress, the STOP Act. Specifically, the Private Property Rights Protection Act would prohibit all federal economic development funds for a period of two years for any state and local government that uses economic development as a justification for taking property from one person and giving to another private entity. In addition, this legislation would allow state and local governments to cure violations by giving the property back to the original owner. Furthermore, this bill specifically grants adversely affected landowners the right to use appropriate legal remedies to enforce the provisions of the bill. The bill also includes a carefully crafted definition of economic development that protects traditional uses of eminent domain, such as taking land for public uses like roads, while prohibiting abuses of eminent domain powers. No one should have to live in fear of the government snatching up their home, farm, or business, and the Private Property Rights Protection Act will help to create incentives to ensure that these abuses do not occur in the future. This bill is very bipartisan in nature, and the adage that one's home is one's castle applies to people across the economic spectrum. I look forward to the witness's testimony, and I am particularly looking forward to the testimony of Mrs. Kilo. I thank you very much for coming to the committee. It's my understanding this is the first time that you have testified before the Judiciary Committee, and I want to say to you uh, that as uh, a woman who had the courage to take on the bureaucracy and take a case all the way to the United States Supreme Court, even though it resulted in an unfortunate uh, decision by the court, uh, has helped to highlight this plight that many property owners have. And uh, the gentleman from New York is correct. Forty states have changed their laws as a result of your good work. So I thank you very much for that. And I'll tell you, that uh, the decision that came down, that many of us have protested, was at the time the most unpopular Supreme Court decision in the history of polling when people were surveyed about that. And I agree very much with Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who represents one of the poorest uh, congressional districts in an urban area in the entire country and who strongly supports this measure because she knows two things. One, that uh, any person's property is their castle, no matter what their background is. And she knows that so often it is people of lower incomes who are the first targets of government saying, I'm going to take your property for one economic development purpose because I think we collectively as a government 
can do better with your property than you can yourself. That's wrong. In my opinion, it's a clear violation of the United States Constitution, and anything this Congress can do to protect it will be wonderful. But nothing will, we do will ever match what you have already done. So thank you and God bless you.